A skinny sailor, braver or less experienced than the rest, grabbed at the iron links dragging behind him as he neared the rail. Oron lashed with his tail, catching him on the temple, then turned and snapped his teeth shut, just missing the young man's face. The youth released the chain, sat upright, and scuttled backwards with a speed that gave Oron more satisfaction than anything since he had been captured. He heard water foaming against the side of the ship somewhere below in the darkness, and shot under the rail and over the ship's side. He tucked his legs to his sides as he dived, plunging into the water like an arrow. Without even reading the stars, he felt the ship was heading north, so he was on the wrong side of the vessel. He opened his eyes with water lids lowered, then pivoted under the hull of the ship. The chains dragged at him. He had to thrash to move through the water, and at a pace he'd never be able to keep up for long with them trailing behind him. He broke the surface at the far side of the ship and chewed his other foreclaw free. He could see nothing on the horizon to the east over the gentle swell. The ship was his prison, but it did float. He pressed his legs to the side and wiggled his hips, shoulder, and tail to swim to the part under the overhang of the back. Swimming would be so easy if it weren't for the metal dangling beneath him and the weight of his collars. He clung on to the wood of the ship with his good claw as he freed his hind legs, chewing through the leather bags. He lost teeth in the process, but they were just hatchling teeth. Spitting blood, he looked at the collar under his arms. That wretched human had somehow fixed it in a way that he could not see how to get it off. But he might be able to break the chain dragging at him. He clamped his teeth to the wooden wing that steered the ship and curled his spine, bringing his bigger back legs to the loops of the chain. He fixed his claws in the convenient holds and called on what reserves of strength he had, pretending he had a dwarf to gut under his hind legs. Oron's legs, so long confined, hardly had the power to keep their grip, but the muscles in his back broke the chain, and its accursed links went to the bottom unregretted. He heard man-voices above, searching the sea for him, but the ship did not stop. He re-gripped the back of the ship and managed to get the chain of the neck collar off as well. He tried to slip the metal collar off his head, but he couldn't remove it without taking his head with it. He panted after the effort, legs shaking with fatigue. Thank the egg that sheltered me. They're useless when swimming. More and more men were going to the rail around the ship, Sooner or later, one might think to look under the stern. He closed his water lids again and swam underwater from the ship into the pathless ocean. He might exhaust himself, he might sink, but he'd do it as a free dragon.